it was my it was my greatest fear like a lot of the reason that I think I wasn't honest was my fear of man and in those moments on the stage like it was my my greatest fear was coming coming true Tell us how you met your wife, Carrie. Yeah, so after I became a Christian, I went to um, went to Panama City Beach, Florida, for a spring break thing, and I I went down there and I was kind of riding the fence a little bit and tried to do some of my old sitting and this kind of stuff. And the Lord used a number of people to uh, from from crew um, and uh, a couple other ministries to minister to me at that time. Came back the the next year. And uh, they have this thing called um, a beach reach. So we'd go for the, the week and share with people, uh, share the gospel with people. Anyway, um, I shared my testimony at that. And um, afterwards, I bumped into this, this, this pretty girl. Uh, her name was Carrie. Um, and we, we exchanged uh, information because I was trying to recruit her to go to this um, summer project that we were doing. And, uh, and then... Uh, which if she was here, her, her side of the story is very sanctified. I basically went back and started dating another girl and dated this other girl for some six years, got engaged to the other girl twice, tried really hard to marry the other girl. And it was kind of like what God did when I met Carrie was like, here, get her information. You're too stupid to be able to have this relationship now. We've got some stuff we've got to work on with you. Um, and then, you know, kind of fast forward um, some six years later, um, reached back out to her after the other girl and I um, finally broke it off and somehow she was still single and I am forever thankful for that. So, yeah. <laughs> That's wild. So you, you guys got married when you were... I was 29. 29, okay. Yeah. Was Which good. was a bit later than I, I, I personally desired to. Um, and, you know, but God's timing was, was perfect for a lot of reasons. I want to ask you this question as it relates to your testimony, what you came from, and then your relationship with Carrie. So... How did the gospel reshape how you viewed women over that time? I mean, you were a believer for eight years at the point you get married. How did the gospel reshape how you viewed women and Carrie specifically? Yeah, my, my life before Christ, um, I, you know, in one sense respected women. My, my parents taught me well to respect women, but in a, another sense, I very much did not. I, yeah, had a lot of relationships that, that just used people in ways that was not honoring to them, honoring to the Lord. And, uh, you know, you live that way for a long time and then, and then you become a Christian and not everything changes immediately. So there was some, some growth that happened to ha had to happen. I also struggled with, with pornography, um, or early as, as a believer and even into the first several years as, as a, as a pastor. Um, but I think what the, the gospel did was the gospel infiltrates and turns the light on that people are created, particularly women are created for men to, to, to cherish, to honor, to respect, to serve, to lay our life, our desires down for, rather than someone to objectify and to use and to manipulate for whatever we want. And, you know, that's a, every relationship's like that, but God God certainly gave a lot of a lot of grace to where now, you know, I can I can look at my wife and I, I treasure her. Um, and, and a lot of that is Christ in her and the way that she's ministered to me because of my own um, just abiding sinfulness. She's been a, a wonderful model of, of being a source of, of grace to help me point uh, to help point me back to, to Jesus and his 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 abundant mercy. The, you know, the the goal of every healthy pastoral marriage would be that we live a pure life, a p pure in heart life, and we would wash our wives in the water of the word, right? That's Ephesians 5, this idea that we're sanctifying her. Um, but Barna did this research study back in 2016 where they found out 35% of pastors and youth pastors were currently actively using pornography. Um, how did your past pornography use affect your marriage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the first three years that I was at the church that I was, I was pastoring, um, <clears throat> in Texas, I, I had a secret struggle with, with pornography. Um, I hated it, but it was, it was there and the pattern would change over the years, but I would, 
I would look at something that I shouldn't, I'd feel guilty, I would reach out to a friend, I would confess it, uh, kind of minimally, uh, enough to not feel guilty anymore. And that pattern kind of went on for a while. And um, yeah, I was, I was a hypocrite. I learned, I learned to wear a mask. I was, I was trying to, I hated it though. I mean, I, I hate, I love the Lord and I hated my sin, but all of that was going on. And I felt this pressure. I didn't know how to talk about it as, as a pastor um, because I, I didn't want to let people down. I didn't want them to, to think that the things I was saying about Jesus wasn't true. And it was just this whole, this whole mess. So God, um, he, he mercifully intervened through, through a friend um, and helped me to, to come into the light in that and um, ended up you know, sharing with my elders kind of the full story of where I was, ended up standing before the congregation um, and sharing everything uh, in a way that um, it, was my, it was my greatest fear. Like a lot of the reason that I think I wasn't honest was my fear of man and in those moments on the stage, like it was my, my greatest fear was coming, coming true, you know, like I'm telling people what I had done. And, you know, the reception was some people um, walked out of church and have never walked in a church again because I had been a hypocrite and had confused them about God. And that's, that's a weighty thing, you know. Um, Others embraced me and said, we'll walk with you through this. Thank you for your honesty. It was just a, a mix of, of, of things, right? Um, and actually in the, the midst of my confessing all of that thing, all of that is Carrie and I had, had, had begun our dating relationship and I had been honest with her at the front end. I'd had a, a season of some, you know, um, some, some freedom, um, but she knew everything. And so she was walking with me through all of that um, in a way that, her kindness and, um, yeah, she gospeled me. Like she just kept reminding me that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You know, that you're, you're walking the light now, you're aiming to, to fight against these things. Um, and so yeah, in a lot of ways, she's washing me with the word, you know, and, and encouraging me with, with gospel truth. And then, you know, we're, we're helping each other. I'm reminding her, I'm like, listen, God can, God deals with, with honesty. He can deal with that. We can trust him. He's going to, to make, um, he's going to make the path clear for us. We can, we can trust him. So in the midst of all that, we were helping each other with the word. And so our, the early part of our relationship was really forged in a fire, as it were. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of difficult things in those, those days, but God, um, gave grace and he, he helped us. Um, and, you know, I found in her we, we, a, a safe place to be able to to be honest about abiding temptations and those kinds of things. So that that was a huge help for me to to have guy friends that I was con I learned how to confess with. I learned how to live in a gospel community where I was honest and transparent about temptations, about struggles, about any compromises, and I was able to to have that same kind of conversation with, with Carrie in a way that was life giving. Um, I didn't feel like I had to have secrets and all that kind of stuff. And the Lord really used that, I think, to, to help our oneness. Um, and to, um, it, it, it brought for me the seriousness of pornography, like face to face, the thought of, of engaging in that sin and then having to talk to my wife about it and engaging with her, just, I didn't want to hurt her anymore. Um, and she's been, she's been a wonderful helper in these days, in these years. So I'm, I'm forever thankful for her. Hey pastor, thanks for watching this video. The Focus Pastor is here to encourage you, your family and the church. So if you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or check out our website.